Hi everyone, my name is Ms. Connolly. I started making some math videos for my fifth graders to help them learn during this time and decided that I was going to try to help as many students as possible. I'm learning a lot about the other grades. I hope you're learning a lot. Parents, I hope this is helpful to you. I know that math is different than how we learned it back in the day. So I'm partially making these videos for you so that you can help your student. If you have any topics you want me to cover, one through five, no higher. Um, Connolly math at home at gmail.com. Okay, so let's get started. In the last video that I made, I talked about representing fractions on a number line, and all of those fractions were between zero and one. So we just had one whole that we were talking about, and I used a story problem context that Ms. Connolly is walking one mile, and I was stopping at different uh, points along the number line. But what happens when our fraction is more than one whole? And this is something that is, um, comes up in third grade, comes up in fourth grade, it continues to come up in fifth grade. Uh, it's a really important understanding, so let's get to it. So I'm gonna go over what's happening on an area model representation down here. At the same time, I'm gonna help you represent it on the number line. And I want you thinking about the numerator and the denominator once we get over here, because things are gonna be a little different than we're used to seeing, okay? So let's talk about halves first. That's always a good place to start. So when we're talking about halves, we're talking about two equal parts of one whole, okay? So I have two different wholes here. I'm gonna split this one here in half. It needs to be in two equal parts. I'm gonna do my best, always when you're making a representation, do your best to make them look equal. It's okay if it's not perfect, but we do wanna be as close to perfect as we're capable of being when we're talking about fractions and equal parts. So when I think about halves, I have one half here, and I have another half here, but let's start with this first half. So between zero and one whole on the number line, so Ms. Connolly is walking two miles, and I get tired easily, so I'm going to stop at one half of a mile. Okay, so if you see here, this is one whole. This is really important to think about. I split one whole, one whole, into two equal parts. Okay, because when we think about fractions, it's equal parts of one whole. We're going to be dealing with two holes today, and you're going to see what happens. Okay, when I have the entire thing shaded in, when I've walked that full mile, how many halves is that? Two halves. So in the last video, we discovered that when the numerator and denominator are the same, it's equivalent, which means equal to one whole, and you can see the two halves here, and you can see one half, two halves here, okay? And then you see I've traveled the full mile. When we're thinking about a number line, we're thinking about the distance here, so zero to here is one half, zero to here is two halves, which is one whole mile. So now, what happens if I add another half? So I went one whole mile, which is two halves, and now I'm gonna go another half. So we're not gonna be thinking about this as a mixed number right now. Parents, we're gonna be thinking about it as an improper fraction. How many halves is that? One half, two halves, three halves. So if I split this here from one to two, this would be three halves, which is something that our friends are not used to seeing just yet. What are you noticing about the numerator and the denominator? It's different than what you're used to, okay? So I take my little sip of water there at three halves of a mile, so over a whole, I've gone a half a mile, two halves of a mile, three halves of a mile, and what happens when I've gone the two full miles? I have one half, two halves, three halves, four, So I want that to sink in for just a minute. What's going on when we get above one whole? What happens with the numerator and the denominator? Because it's different than what we've seen. And I, sorry, I live in the city. If <laughs> you heard the truck honking. But anyways, if, um, what was I saying? When we get greater than a whole, you notice that my numerator, the top number is called the numerator, is greater 
than the denominator because I have more than one whole. So when your numerator is greater than your denominator, you have more than one whole, which happened here. I had one whole, which was two halves, and then I had a third half that's more than one whole. It's the, the first piece of the second whole. And then when I get to two, you might start to notice something. I don't know if, if you need to know it in third grade, but then I have four halves, and there's a relationship between the four and the two as well. Okay, so you can be thinking about that. I'm not gonna go over that in this video, but when we start going over a whole, our numerator gets greater than our denominator, and you saw that third half here. This is two halves, it's one whole. We're still talking about halves. This is our third half. So it's a little more than obviously a whole, okay? So let's think about what, what happens if we're talking about a different denominator, so different size pieces. Okay, so let me reset the board here. I was trying not to have to redraw everything, so thank you for being patient. Okay, I did talk about fourths in the last video, so let's go ahead and talk about fourths. Let me remake that. So if we're thinking about fourths, you should be thinking to yourself, how many equal pieces are we thinking about if we have fourths? And, any volunteers? Just kidding. Um, you're talking about four equal pieces. So, let me, and you know there's other ways to represent fourths on an area model, but because I'm using this to match up with my number line so we can see the importance of equal parts. So between zero and one, so this is one whole, just like how this is one whole, I'm gonna have four equal parts. That does not mean four ticks, that you're drawing, it means four equal parts. So I see one, two, three, four equal parts. And if I walk the first fourth, I've gone one fourth of a mile. If I walk the second fourth, I've gone two fourths of a mile. Hmm, I want you to be thinking about something. Is there another way I could think about two fourths? We're not gonna bring that up in this video because I'm just going over how to label the number line and make sense of fractions greater than a whole. But you should be thinking about how much is shaded in here and thinking about noticing. So parents, we always want them to keep noticing things and keep coming up with things on their own. That's where the learning comes in. But let's continue. So two fourths is equal to what? Um, so if I go another fourth, that's three fourths. And if I've gone the entire mile, you can see that that's four fourths. So from zero to one, there's four fourths. We know when the numerator and the denominator are the same, that's equivalent to one whole. So that's what we have going on here. And you can see it, I shaded in the whole, um, the whole area model, one whole is shaded in, four fourths, and I've gone one full mile, the distance from zero to one is the same as four fourths. Okay, so what happens if I go one more fourth? What do you think the numerator will be over here if I go one more fourth? And again, as close to equal as possible, the parts. So if I go one more, I've gone one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, and we're still talking about fourths. Kids are gonna to wanna to think this is eighths because they see eight pieces, but we're talking about each whole has four parts, so you're talking about fourths. Very common confusion happens to fifth grade, which is what I teach. Four fourths here, this is another whole. We're still talking about four equal pieces of one whole. So one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five fourths, and you are seeing that your numerator is greater than your denominator. That's gonna happen when you have more than one whole. Anytime you have more than a whole, the numerator is greater than the denominator. Important for comparing fractions. Okay, so five fourths. If I go another fourth, that's five fourths, six fourths, seven fourths, and if I go two holes, that's eight fourths. And you should be thinking about four fourths, 
plus another four fourths, four fourths is a whole, plus another four fourths is eight fourths. Interesting. Something to think about. Okay, I'm going to show one more representation um, on the number line going over one whole, and then I'll be making other videos about why the number line is important, how we use it, and also about comparing fractions, which is a very important skill learned in third grade. It happens more in fourth grade. It happens even more in fifth grade. Okay, so let me set up again. It might just be easier to start fresh. It might just be easier to start fresh at this point. Okay, so. I'm making that one, zero, hole here. Oh, other important situation. When I'm talking about holes here, I'm also trying to make my holes the same size. So the distance from here to here should be the same as the distance from here to here. This should be about the same size as that. Difficult to do quickly on the whiteboard, but important that we're talking about same size holes, especially when we get to comparing fractions. Remember that. All right, one more. So we talked about halves, we talked about fourths. Let's talk about, um, I think I did six in the last video. I'll do eights. Let's challenge myself here. Not fun to draw eights going this way. So you notice even Miss Conley messes up sometimes. It's hard to make equal size pieces. You're just going to do your best. Okay, if we had a ruler, then obviously expect some more out of um, perfectly equal size pieces. So let's think about what this looks like on the number line. So I'm going to actually extend our understanding a little bit. I'm just going to label one half here, and I'm going to label half of this one here. Just something that we should be thinking about. Just thinking about. All right, so if I am making eight equal parts, that does not mean eight ticks. That means eight parts. So it would be one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths. One eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths. Not equal parts. Same as one half, just saying. Five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths. I'm wondering if anyone noticed anything about the size of the pieces. Now that I'm doing eighths, and last time I did fourths, now that I'm doing eighths, do you think about anything about the size of the pieces? Did they get bigger? Or did they get smaller? Another thing I want you thinking about. Um, all right, so when we get to one whole, eight eighths is shaded in. One whole, the numerator and the denominator are the same. And then you would continue just like you would another one. We have um, nine eighths would be next, 10 eighths, 11 eighths, 12 eighths. Let's see what that looks like. Interesting. Four out of eight is shaded in over here. And then you would keep going 13 eighths, 14 eighths, 15. 16 eighths and two holes is the same as 16 eighths, which you should be thinking about how many groups of eight eighths do you have? Something that gets tackled later on. But the point of this video is that when you get greater than one whole, you're going to see that your numerator is greater than your denominator. That means that you have more than one whole. Even though you see 16 pieces here, we're talking about eighths because eighths are equal parts of one whole, okay? And over here we have more than eight eighths because this is our second whole. Important to know on the number line is that in between zero and one is where you're gonna show your first group of eight eighths. In between one and two is where you would show your second group of eight eighths. And as always, our pieces are equal. We wanna get as close to equal as possible. 
So this is how you would show fractions um, between zero and two. So greater than a whole, well, between zero and one, and then greater than a whole on the number line. You can see it in the area model representation as well. Okay, keep watching to learn even more about